Uh, breakfast is served. Okay, I've left Pumamaka. I just saw you know it's cooling down. Might as well uh, make use of it. Only 250 kilometres, 225 kilometres for the border. Uh, but I'll probably drive all the way up to the border tonight and save the night at the UPFE in a place called Maqueca and deal with the border tomorrow morning. Three and a half hours later, I'm at the border, but uh, the border's closed now, it's about 10 o'clock at night, so I'm at the YPF, get some fuel in the morning, sleep here the night, and um, get as far as I can tomorrow. Uh, you know, sad to be leaving Argentina, but definitely ready to leave Argentina. I've got more anxiety about going through fucking Bolivia, but now I've got a hundred and, I mean, I'll have 160 litres of fuel in the car. I've got a hundred in jerry cans and 60 in the tank. That's enough to get me right, to Peru, basically. It's in the morning, I'm at the EPF edge, let's get the last bit of fuel, and uh, and the border is two kilometers that way. I've got uh, about, I think it's six, 700 kilometers to get to La Paz. I'll probably break it up into two days. Day another border, here I am. This is the um, border with Bolivia. It's slowly edge you into Bolivia. All the roads start to fall apart about 500 meters from the uh, crossing. It even gets really dirty, it just sort of lulls you into this it. border is so chaotic, I mean, it's like, it's such an introduction into this country because it's just fucking no rules, people everywhere, no lines. It's up in Bolivia, you've got to stand on a brick. <laughs> it's so small here. Yeah. I'm waiting for my turn to go through the, uh, so you check the car out. I mean, I'm, I'm really hoping they don't flag all this fuel because there's quite a lot of fuel here now. Uh, as a, as a last case scenario, I could always try and bung them a little bit of money just to turn a blind eye, but I, I never bribe police, I won't do it. I'm almost, out, I'm almost into Bolivia. Um, the last bit is they go spray the car, the outside of the car. I don't know why they spray the outside of the car because this country is so fucking dirty. Okay, anyway. I've got my supplies for the next three days. I've got a bag of bread, that's all I really need, and a bag of coca to get me over. It's coming into Tapiza. From here to um, the uni is about 200 kilometers. So, so far, the first 100 kilometers, it's not a drama. Second now, this bit's steep. Uh, so fast. The scenery out here is stunning. That stretch was quite hard, guys. In first gear, didn't overheat. <coughs> the car was chugging along, thankfully. About 4,000 meters now, so I'm idling along. But uh, the car's definitely feeling it. Okay, last 90 kilometers. I was going uphill for such a long time, the car did get hot. <coughs> so I had 4,000 meters. It's tough on any car, but on a car like this, probably more so. Here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So funny, in this car you have to actually lean to give it a bit of balance on one side. Having all this fuel. It's a bit of remote out here. If I have any problems, I'm on my own.
after I slept last night, right next to the army base, nice and safe. One thing about uh, this part of the world is that things start very early. So, you know, at six o'clock in the morning, had the army cleaning and doing all the drills and shit around the car, so I'm to get up. Going along the Alta Plano, about 4,000 meters, cars running well. This is definitely the right way to get back to La Paz. It's so flat and the, the climbs are really gentle. So, gracias, Marcos. It's a guy I should make it there today, I hope. Beautiful scenery, absolutely stunning out here. It's the first 300 kilometers done. I've just hit Uro, which is a big town, and I forgot how fucking awful the drivers are in Bolivia. Oh my god. So there's no rules on the road at all. No rules whatsoever. We've got 200 kilometers to go to get to the pass. Oh, this is interesting. Fucking roadblock. Oh my god. Good thing about Bolivia is you can go backwards on the highway and go back around the other side. Perfect. The first 350 kilometers, no problem. Now all of a sudden, I'm losing power. Fuck. I'm sort of. Well, I'm reluctant to take the carburetor apart by the side of the road, but if I have to, I will. It looks like I had a dirty fuel filter, so I've just changed that over. We're moving now, but the trepidation is building. Hundred kilometers from the pass, uh, about four thousand one hundred meters. It's been, uh, it's been a. Oh, I mean, I was going to say it's been a stressful day, but given what I used to be used to on the way back to Rio Cuarto, with all the breaking down, it hasn't been that bad. I'm not looking forward to the traffic though in La Paz. It's market day as well, Thursday, so it's fucking pandemonium. We'll see what happens. Just coming into my nemesis. This is chaos. Absolute chaos. really didn't want to come through the buzz for this reason. It's such hard work on the car, on me, it's just it's absolute chaos. Oh dear. I finally made it back to Los Lomos I after know. 13 hours. <laughs> I tell you what, man, it's great to be back with Marcos. Awesome. No, I have my friend. <laughs> with Fernet and a friend, everything is okay in the buzz. Almost up as woo! It's wet season here, so I just arrived. Look at this. 